I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Do your own research. Consult a professional investment advisor before making any investment decisions. This show is for entertainment only. Faites vos propres recherches. Here we are. In another episode. And a simple success podcast. And this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. What we're telling you is that financial success isn't pulling out teeth without anesthesia. I wish I'd listened to what my mother said when I was still a young boy. Why, DT? What'd she say? I don't know. I didn't listen. Hitchhiker's Guide Code Detected. Oh, don't go there. This is not episode 42. Right. I grew up believing money was this mysterious thing that you handled with trepidation. I would be like... What if I lose everything? You know, it's never too late to unlearn tired old lessons that aren't working and learn new ones that will propel you to the future. You change everything. Change starts with the person in the mirror before it can impact others. John, could you please clear this up? Is change an event or is change a process? Oh, easy. Change is a process, my friend, and an endless one at that. Once you think you're done, like a faithful servant, you'll find that you've only gotten started, and it's time to get going again. Right. As a wise man once said, if you don't start, you can't ever call it done. When did you hear me say that? I said a wise man. Oh, okay. I see. We'll discuss that during the break. In other words, you have to keep on changing. Yes, Change keeps us alive to the opportunities of life. The prehistoric animals that couldn't change, they became extinct. And a modern example is the Kodak story. And that's where many people are. Poor people, without knowing it. Extinct while still alive. Or, as I used to hear in the military, they're a roadie. Which means? Retired on active duty. Roadie. R-O-A-D. And the E part. Just government stuff. Anyway... Retired on active duty. That's an awful place to be in. Well, that's why we're doing this. To get folks out of this fix and make them cherish change with all its challenges, even in our daily lives. So, about this parable of the talents thing. I didn't know you were a Bible freak. I mean, isn't this parable of talents story from the Bible? It is. But I'm not a Bible freak. It's just a great historical lesson. I am a knowledge and story freak, my friend. Wherever I find a well of knowledge, I quench my thirst. It doesn't matter if it's religious or scientific, or even which religion or science. A thirsty camel does not choose the oasis. Actual learning opportunity detected. Got it, John. I'll always keep that in mind. Now, can you break down this parable, please? This parable talks about a master who is leaving his estate for an extended period of time. He entrusts talents to each of his three servants according to their abilities. How much does each servant receive? One servant receives five talents, the second receives two, and the third receives one talent. I thought talent was a special gift or ability, and not something tangible or quantifiable. Can you please clarify this misunderstanding? You got it. Back in the day, a talent was used as a measurement of weight. It was equivalent to roughly 80 pounds or so. However, when used as a currency, one talent was about 6,000 denarii, which was a standard Roman coin used for paying a day's labor. How much work was that? During those times, one talent was equivalent to approximately 16 years worth of labor. This means the master gave the first servant 80 years worth of labor or the equivalent. The second servant got 48 years worth of labor or the equivalent. He meant 32, not 48. No DMs about that. All stay believed. While the third servant? While the third servant was trusted with 16 years worth of labor or the equivalent. That's a ton of money, John. With even the third servant's talent, I can turn my life around. Good paradigm shifting, DT. Just look at it, or anything, from a different angle. 
There is a difference between knowing what one is supposed to do and getting down to brass tacks and doing it. Parsu presto! Still, we're all wired differently. We can't all be rich, can we? That's a poverty mindset, E.T. We can all be rich. I am taking notes. Okay, here's what to don't do. Don't put pictures of poverty in your mind. That just results in gnashing of teeth and stuff like that. No! No! Instead, get pictures of wealth into the minds of the poor. That's deep, pal! It's not only deep, it might be you. The imagination is literally the workshop wherein are fashioned all plans created by man. The impulse, the desire, is given shape, form, and action through the aid of the imaginative faculty of the mind. Napoleon Hill Court detected. So, what about the capacity thing? What capacity thing? In the story, each servant was given talents according to their capacity, remember? Right, that's just their ability to handle the size of the job, based on what they'd done before, their track record. Oh, so you're saying that even the servant with the one talent could grow, but he messed it up? Yep, that's what I'm saying. Opportunities abound to learn and grow our capacities. There is an opportunity like this where we teach people to simple even the hardest things in life. Oh, this podcast is a cheat code for life, isn't it? Everyone should be a co-founder and join our community. Yeah, thanks for getting that in there, DT. But on with the story. Capacity is supposed to act as a guide to make us break glass ceilings, conquer distant lands, and even become a better version of ourselves. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas with profitable labor. Right, Bing. Hill said, dreams are not born of indifference, laziness, or lack of ambition. What is the cure? You have to want it. Desire is the pill that one needs to swallow to cure this triple threat to one's dreams. Hill said, every person who wins in any undertaking must be willing to burn his ships and cut all sources of retreat. Burn his ships? That's a drastic measure, don't you think? There come times in life where we must take drastic measures or else. This is sending positive vibes up and down my entire being. I sense a but coming here. But please allow me to be the devil's advocate for common people. Maybe the third servant was thinking. Skipping the devil jokes, you've used the word thinking. As you know, success and failure are all in the mind. It all goes back to imagination as our basis of ability. Wow, that should be a wake-up call for me to use my talents. You'd be surprised at the number of people who get these type of wake-up calls. Yeah, they hit the snooze button and continue sleeping on their talents, wasting that all-important element of time. I will stick to my lane of reading people's minds. Okay, let me call your bluff, DT. Read Daniel's mind right now. Walk the talk. Tell us what Daniel is thinking. Oh, he's just going to point us to... Break number one. Hello, everyone. This is John with the Simple Success Podcast. Financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Because we know you want to show us some serious love in return for the tremendous benefits you get from us. Please head over to the support link in our written show notes. That's the words on your podcast player. There, you can choose from a $9.99 per month doing level of support, a $4.99 knowing level, or a basic intro level of just $0.99 cents per month. Great place to start, whichever you choose. Thank you so much for helping us do this for you. And to leave us a voice message, which just might see the light of day in a future podcast, go to those same written show notes. You'll go to a site where you can leave a video, audio, or text-only message, depending on how you feel at the moment. You can also send us an audio file attached to an email if you use just more than your phone for stuff. I won't repeat those links because weird. And anyway, show notes. It's all in there and it's all easy. Do you have examples of people who use their talents to change their lives? Yes, I have a prime example, as a matter of fact, one we've touched on many times before. But about today's topic, I want to take a different approach to the subject matter. And what's that approach? At times, our lives can take a different path. 
but we should not take our eyes off our talent or the goal. Go on! Success is not always a straight line. There will be twists and turns, and sometimes alarm bells will shriek in your head and make you think you're on the wrong path, or you've missed the right turn. That's when we silence the alarms with knowledge. So, at such times, if I know what I'm doing, I shouldn't think I'm wasting my time or talents? Right, DT, that's the right attitude. But what if I'm thinking I missed the boat? That can happen even the best. You may have missed one boat, but you didn't miss them all. When you look at Edwin C. Barnes, who I've been talking about, you'd have thought he had missed the boat, but instead he got a big return. Yeah, that man was resilience personified. Many years ago, Edwin C. Barnes dropped everything he was doing and went to work for Thomas Edison. His burning desire was to be Edison's business associate. This fact tells me that, though still unproven, Barnes had an acumen or talent for business, for constant service. Goodness, John, I never saw that coming. See, there are times when we may have talent, but we do not know it. It only comes to life when we get in touch with the right person. It's like two live wires coming together and producing sparks. Can you please keep this out of the long story trap? Yeah. To cut a long story short, a few years after meeting Edison, Barnes again stood before one of the greatest inventors who ever lived in the same office where they first met. But this time around, he was not an apprentice, but instead in business with Edison. But it's not all about talent, right? That was a genius move from Barnes. No lazy servant on that one, that's for sure. To quote Edison, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Barnes put in some elbow grease. That's a lesson to everyone who is sitting and waiting for things to happen. Or things that can happen in five minutes. You know, even if you have the most talent in the world, if you don't make any moves, nothing will happen. We've learned this from the parable of the talents in other places. When a man with any talents does nothing... That's what he reaps. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Life does not favor people who do not use their talents. Say that again. Life does not favor people who do not use their talents. What's that supposed to mean? In the parable of the talents, the servant who buried his talent had his taken away, and it was given to the one who had much and had already doubled his portion. That seems unfair, John. Au contraire. There were other people in Edison's circle before Barnes set foot in Edison's office. They may have had more talents and opportunities, but it was Barnes who made the transition from apprentice to associate. It was Barnes who used his talents. Does this mean Barnes took what others would have taken? Yeah. It was Barnes' good luck as well as innate ability that worked his magic for him. What are the unsuccessful people guilty of doing then? Staying on the fence. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Sam. That's it. They stayed on the fence. Staying on the fence causes many people to let their talents go to waste. And then? And then, if they do nothing about it, they end up regretting it for the rest of their lives. I would love to see the people that Barnes got the better of. Too bad they're all dead. All contraire again. They're nearer and more alive than you think. Meaning? Take a look in the mirror, my friend. Actual learning opportunity detected. I don't get it, John. What I'm saying is, people can and do still make those same plunders. But we're not going there. We're going to clear our heads instead, right? By breathing? Sure, but something else first. But first? Break number two. We know a lot about you already. Because we know ourselves. For example, we know that you know how to listen to our podcast. We also know that you probably know how to subscribe. So as soon as you're done with that, tell us your story. We have ways you can contact us. It involves a special link where you can leave us a message. We may have an email address for you as well in the future, and we'll let you know if that happens. The reason for subscribing? I thought you'd never ask. When you subscribe, you automatically download all future episodes of that podcast. It just happens in your player without you having to go search again. How cool is that? 
This means better rankings for the podcast, more attention from advertisers, and more money. And this means more and better stuff for you. So your motivation is simple and easy. Subscribe today, whatever app and from whatever place you like. And don't just try to subscribe. There is no try. There is only do. We're changing the way we look at things. And remember, that's good. Eso es bueno, Sibyl. Also remember, this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Coaching happiness. Our call to action is right in the show notes. Find it and you win too. Can I simple that? Por supuesto. Of course. Just simple it. Please make sure your seat belts are fastened and your tray tables are in their upright position. And make sure simple is a verb like Google is a verb. Yes, I'll do that. And I need to think positive about my talents. And quit thinking it is akin to Democles' sword dangling above my head while tied to a strand of hair. Wow, 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 my man. You are going deep into metaphor land with that one. That's good. Yes, Fiona, it is good. And we'll go more into that one, too, later. But for now, DT, can you please expound on what you were saying? Gladly. We should think of talents as stuff we can do, not as burdens we haven't tried. It's okay to be scared a little, but all this means that we all know you can do it. The richest piece of real estate in the world is the cemetery. Why? Because of all the unused talents buried therein. Cue the laughter. <laughs> the other thing I have learned is that talents often have periods tied to them. This truth applies to investments as well. With investments, I have to seize the day, or else my fruitful labor might be overtaken with events. Carpe diem. Accountability is key in investing. And the more accountability partners, the better. The third servant's story could have turned out differently if he'd sought advice from those other two. Yeah, there are so many ways to get the job done, and the ways to invest keep increasing by the day. There are investment opportunities like crypto. You you just have to get comfortable with one or more of them. Along with the why part? Yes, along with that. And then do it. So, we should not imagine that are using our talent in investing as a minefield, huh? Our job is to simple things for folks. Some so-called gurus like to complicate the issue of investment, which makes many people give investment a wide berth. But, like with Occam's razor, the simplest solution is probably the right one. What is everyone's takeaway, I, the, at least the preferred one? The importance of having multiple streams of income with that one talent, which we have learned is so wide and varied, one can invest in different ventures. Don't put all your eggs into one basket. Or at least do what Andrew Carnegie said. What's that? He said, put all your eggs in one basket and then watch that basket. Silly rabbit. What else? You have to make up your mind. Then follow through with action. As Rosa Parks said, knowing what must be done does away with fear. We've circled right back to the subconscious mind, right? That's right, DT. The subconscious mind receives and files sense impressions or thoughts regardless of their nature. You may voluntarily plant in your subconscious mind any plan, thought, or purpose which you desire to translate into its physical or monetary equivalent. Okay, what should any person with the third servant's attitude do? Think and grow rich. Hill said, faith is the head chemist of the mind, and... It's all in your mind. Absolutely, Alex, and that's a good thing. Hill went on to add that when faith is blended with the vibration of thought, the subconscious mind instantly picks up the vibration, translates it into its spiritual equivalent, and transmits it to infinite intelligence, as in the case of prayer. So I should practice getting a good return? You should, absolutely, with joyful labor even. And then what? Practice some more. Repetitively? Ideally, yes. Which is how you've all gotten good. Gracias por escuchar. Salut. A la prochaine. This podcast and our other podcast are productions of Little Red Hen Industries. 
The supporting cast who helps me bake the bread includes Techno King, John C. Brandy, Fact Checker, Abraham Lincoln, Script Consultant, Open AI, Language Consultant, Ever Evolving, Media Expert, Favor Abassi E.K., Psychologist, William James, Rabbit Hole Advisor, Dr. Mark Perrot, Sound Designer, Goodly Amo Marconi, Videographer, Alfred Hitchcock, Inspiration, Many Podcasts and Other Sources and of course Napoleon Hill. We also have websites, and you can subscribe to both podcasts and get ebooks and other great stuff. You can send us a video, audio, or text message, but of course, you'll have to head to the show notes, either on your phone or on the web, to actually get links and stuff. And those clickable links are in the show notes. And before we forget, the artificial intelligence or AI voices you hear in our work come from Google, Amazon Polly, OpenAI and the online tone generator linked in the show notes. Finally, you can find us on prodmatch.com and matchmaker.fm, where we consider guests and guesting on other pods. And really finally, the music for our pods comes from Cute by Ben Sound and from Piano Background by Nick Simon Adams. The sound effects credits go to Jackson Academy Ashmore, Canoe CG, Dr. Jekyll, Joe Payne, Everything Sounds, MK Play More Stories, ERH, Sand Emotions, Big Pickle 51, and Just Good Ink, yes. That's his or her name, all on freesound.org.